All right, guys, fun lulls on tap. We got the fellas from ETR, Adam Levitan, Mike Leone, joining us today. They have entered the ring as far as the sim wars go. They have their new solver product that is now doing some simulation work on the side. We will uh, pick their brains about what's going on over there, how they feel about the overall DFS landscape, and who knows what else we'll get into. Brian, you know, wants to talk about hot naked yoga again, so we'll see how it goes. I, does he think... I it's think he thinks goat. this. He thinks this is a go. Vegas Dave thinks this is a go. Hot naked girls doing yoga. What? Why don't you just win like a man? Random.org. <laughs> Type in one for yes, two for no. And let the DFS guys pick for you. And I'm absolutely begging you not to do <laughs> bus. Please. Please don't do bus. Uh, all right, let me do, uh, as Adam would call it, Tech Lord, and press the button that shows all of us on the screen. Levitan, you've been on LOLs before. Leone, is this your first time on LOLs? This is my first LOLs appearance, yeah. Wow, wow. Hmm. And uh, I mean, how, how cold is it up there in Buffalo? You're rocking the hoodie right now? I don't know. I don't really go outside anymore, so I'm not sure how <laughs> cold or warm it is. <laughs> Leody, I, I meant to message you. So I was flying back from Vegas and they were like, we have visibility issues in Boston. We can't land there right now. And they rerouted us to Buffalo and it was really touch and go for a sec. So we landed in Buffalo and I thought we were going to have to deplane. I was like, I might just have to call up Leone, tell him to come pick me up from the airport. But we ended up staying on the plane, taking off shortly after. But I did uh, see the the dreary, depressed uh, land that you live in for, <laughs> for a few short minutes. They have an airport in Buffalo? apparently they apparently. do it doesn't go very many places but it exists <laughs> uh levitan how are you doing another season underway solo pods going etr grinding their cocks to a nub all that good stuff yeah man it's, it's good um yeah it's good it seems like uh, i thought the action in week one for cash was a little bit uh lower than i thought it would be but nothing terrible so i i was i was uh, uh cautiously optimistic are people still sending you head to heads at an absurd clip? I don't answer the ones that people send me. I'm just always posted. If you want to play, oh, yeah. like let's play. I, I don't, I don't, I don't scoop and I don't accept any uh, uh, invites. All right, no, sorry, I was mixing you and, and Matic up. Matic is the one you send your your head to heads to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian, how did your how did your week one go? We didn't get to do a show last week because I was in Vegas, so it's been a, a couple of weeks here. Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, I lost, but not much. I broke even on the main slate, lost the second half slate, even though I had like 8 billion percent of that uh, Chargers game somehow. So uh, in Yahoo, Yahoo's like my bread and butter. And and uh, ever since they switched to allowing CSVs, it's gotten harder. And a wow. bunch of a bunch of guys moved over there. I don't like it, Pete. I don't like it I at all. You know how I know your edge is diminishing? It's you're now talking like one of us. You just said I broke even on the maid slate, which is what we all say when it's never true, Brian. <laughs> you turned into a full normal. I also broke even week one main slate. Oh, okay. No, yeah. I, I swear to God, this time it's true. Yeah. Uh yeah, but um uh I don't know. I I I I think you know, I mean we're eventually gonna start talking about sim, so I'll start it off. I mean, I still think my sim has stuff that uh these what these new sim products aren't doing so you know as long as that's happening i think maybe i still have some edge i am not a no ball type of uh dfs <laughs> player you know shocking so yeah. have, you, have you figured out who jonathan mingo is yet i know that was one you were trying to figure out i don't know i was hoping i'd I, i'd finally win a millie with jonathan mingo in the lineup and then i could <laughs> tweet tweet that out oh so that's who mingo is there you go. Set up the bit here. Look, I mean, 17% of targets in week one. You're probably going to have to know who Jonathan Mingo is at some point this year, Brian. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. It's not too hard, I'm sure. So so let us know like behind the scenes for you guys because there were some whispers about you guys starting to work on sim stuff. Obviously, things really escalated this year. Last year, we had Saber Sim run the sims, but then we saw Stochastic launch theirs. Everyone kind of getting into the mix. So like how long has this been on your guys's radar what made you uh want to make sure you guys were out in the market with this stuff yeah good question we actually didn't go into sims with the idea to make it front facing um we wanted to do sims behind the scenes and hire the people that we thought were the best to help leone build the sims just so we could make our projections better and we could do better in props you know the plan was not to make it 
front facing, it got to a point where we thought we were doing maybe a disservice to our uh, subscribers. We didn't offer them some form of front facing sims. So I would say, you know, Leone can talk more about the technical stuff. But to me, this is like step one of where we eventually want to be. And like the most important thing to me is that we have the best projections and we have um, the best we can do for props. And Sims is helping like massively with that already behind the scenes. So yeah, that was it. But Leone can talk more about exactly what the goals are. Yeah, I mean, we've been thinking about Sims for like years now of this, this is the correct way to do things to like price out the props appropriately to really figure out some of these questions for DFS. I know watching lols, Brian, there was there was an episode you did where you're talking about, you know, giving up two points of correlation or two points versus correlation and how we're really just guessing, you know, it, it might be educated guessing, but we're guessing. So the goal is to find out some of these answers. But as far as how long we've been working on this specifically, we hired two full-time data guys and then like a third contractor uh, very early in the spring slash end of winter. And we've been working on it pretty much nonstop since then to get it out. And it's been an absolute grind. I know I saw Max Steinberg tweet from Saber Sim about how, you know, difficult it is to kind of build these Sims. And it, it, it is extremely complex, but we feel like we've, we've gotten to the point where we've gotten something that's really pretty good. And we're pretty happy with the results. Can I give a quick primer on Sims, Pete, for me, yes. for the, the three people who watch our show who don't know what Sims are? Like, there's kind of three main ones in 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 sports. So there's a play by play sim, which is you know you could kind of put piece together in your head. The, you know, the quarterback throws. Who does it? Who does it go to? Right, and then he so who catches it, or what chances does he have of catching it? And then how far did he get? Right, and then you just do these play by plays you know, for a full game and then they turn it over and now it's the other team's ball, you know, how do they have, and, and um, from that you can use your DFS projections. So like you can get median outcomes and ceiling outcomes and, you know, floor outcomes and you could price props really easily. I've tweeted out some stuff I used to do where you could, you know, see it in live action, whether it's going over or under that, uh, that number, the line that the, the, the book put out there, like that's the best way to price a prop for sure. And get your projections too. So that's Sim one. And then Sim two is then, okay, well then how can we also use this to beat DFS games? And I, 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 I consider there's like two versions of it. Like the real simple one that people kind of used more a few years ago, I call like a horse racing Sim where you Sim the players against each other by position kind of. So like all the tight ends, you now run this, um, this play by play Sim and see, okay, like who came out, best at their position by how much let's compare it to ownership that seems like something smart to do right this is kind of an older school sim and now these new versions of sim was what most of the pros i know were doing and we talked too fucking much i apparently and then it got out and then you know people <laughs> were, were starting to do these behind the scene uh behind the scenes it got a lot more popular and what those are is you're trying to predict what your opponents are doing in a mock field, a fake field. So like, you know, and, and there's just a, there's a whole bunch of different ways you could do this, but you're trying to guess, like, I know, you know, Levitan thinks that fields is going to be played at 12% of the time. So like, he's got to be in 12% of these lineups. What would they look like? And then there's a difference between small field, single entry and a huge, Millie maker too. So what would that look like? And then you actually predict this field and then you compare lineups to it and comparing lineups to it. You could do this a whole bunch of different ways too, but basically you just compare it like it was in the field and give it an ROI for how it scores. And then this is what Leone was uh, uh, alluding to earlier when I would always talk about on this show, like you guys are all guessing, like how do you know that you should go over the Rockies tonight? Cause they're at home or should you go under? Cause everyone's going to play them. How do you know? You're just fucking guessing. And the Sims is guessing still, but it's way more scientific, right? It's like, you know, an actual weatherman as opposed to like, you know, feeling your bones ache is how I would describe the, the way people would do it before Pete. And so like, that's how you uh, answer those questions is through a Sim. And I know there's been a lot of criticism and like of me, like, you know, being a drama queen about all this, but I think, I think, I think uh, 
like people don't have an, uh, like an imagination here. Like they, these guys are just getting started. And so like, I think they're going to get better and better. And that's when the real, uh, <laughs> the real edge will be, will be lost in my opinion. And I, and I think there's a lot of people talking about Sims that don't know the first thing about Sims. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I, I mean, that, that was a lot. You guys go ahead. Well, your I, I wanted to wind it back just a little bit for Levitan because I mean, you are, you are King hand builder. You are the one that feels the best plays deep with inside your gut. Like, I assume you've had like a bit of a crisis of like wrapping your head around like, Hey, we need to have Sims for our overall product and stuff. But I, I know you, you don't want to let a computer make your lineups for you on a, on a Sunday. So I would say like two things, uh, first for me, just playing, like, I have a responsibility to try to get better, like period. I, you know, I'm not playing huge like Brian or whatever, but I get five figures out there on Sunday. Like I have a responsibility to try to get better and win. And I think this is very clearly the way to do that. The way that I've been using it and I've only been using it since we launched it. Uh, so the way that I've been using it is just by testing lineups, you know? So I put a lineup in on Sunday morning, the SIM showed me it had like a negative 20% ROI. I was like, all right, I'm being way too contrarian here. The, uh, the it's just not a good lineup. Let me try something else. So like some of the trial and error stuff, there is other ways to do it, which I'm sure other people are doing at a way more sophisticated level. But for me now, just like testing my single entry lineups and seeing how good I can get of an ROI with them and throwing out some ones that, that are really bad, uh, I think is extremely valuable to single entry. I will say this though, uh, Mans, to your point, there is an incredible amount of apathy and um, uh, negativity around Sims, I felt the same thing around poker when solvers started getting popular. The guys who are not trying to think at the highest level, the guys who are not playing, trying to play professionally, do not want to even hear about this stuff. They're like, oh, this is just, you know, mumbo jumbo, math, nonsense. I don't want to talk about this. You know, tell me who to start this week, uh, Daniel Jones or Dak Prescott, right? And like, I'm not as skeptical as Brian is that Sims are going to completely take over the field in non- MME stuff. In other words, in the 150 max stuff, the Simbros are running over the field in single entry and three max. I'm not as convinced that is the case. And I do think that still in single entry and three max, like running my lineups through is giving me an edge that I didn't have before. So that was kind of the way that I think about it. But I'm, I'm very like sympathetic to the people who don't want to hear about this stuff at all. Like I'm not out there tweeting about it all the time and stuff like that. I don't think that most people in DFS are ready or want uh to use this so yeah that's just the way i think about it but for the five percent or ten percent of people that really do we want to have a product for them that, that was basically it what about you leone because i think most people would assume like hey uh leone if there's anyone that's going to be a sim bro it's you but like the way you build your dfs lineups you have a lot of like hand builder sensibilities to the way you're playing the thunderdome and some of these smaller high stakes contests yeah i do hand build a lot and we kind of have two products with this sim. One is meant more for like a hand builder where you're just building a single lineup and tweaking and, and running that through the sim. And then one's like a multi-entry sim where like you're running 150 optimals with whatever settings you want. And then you can sim all those at one time. So there's two different products. I'm mostly using, you know, the hand built sim. And part of this is one, just like running an, an optimizer, right? Like if everyone just runs an optimizer and plays the optimal lineup like you're not necessarily going to win in fact you're probably not going to same thing with the sim like if you just try to hack the sim and find your lineup that's the exact highest roi it's not necessarily going to work like you still need to think critically so like last week for example the sim is somewhat self-fulfilling in that if we had jordan addison as a bad play for example you're going to catch the correlations where addison does well and the sim's going to help you with that but it's not magically going to make Jordan Addison a great play if we don't think Jordan Addison's a good play. But if you think Addison's a good play, you can start constructing lineups around that assumption and not take like, just understand the ROI is going to show a little bit lower on the Addison lineups because we don't like Addison, but you want to build kind of the smartest Addison lineup you possibly can. And the Sims can kind of help you do that, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, one thing I want to say, like Brian always says, you know, he doesn't know ball. He doesn't need to know ball. He pays us to know ball, right? Like, I assume, like, ETR projections are oh, heavily weighted if it's running through his sim, and it was through the sim, his sim, right? So, like, you actually do still need to know ball, but you can outsource knowing ball. We spend hundreds of combined man hours on projections every week so that Brian can pay us and know ball, right? Like, that's the whole 
idea. Brian can correct me if I'm wrong, but if you didn't know any ball at all and you didn't have any projections, like you need good projections. Otherwise, the sim is just total, total dust. Yeah, I, I, I did make my own NFL projections for years, but then there, at a certain point, it's just not worth it to keep up that database. And it's a lot of work, too, especially if you're not paying staff. Uh, and I didn't have anyone working for me back then. So, like, at a certain point, it's just, you know, like, I always used, like, Cardi, you know, like, I mean, how much better am I going to be than Cardi if I put in eight hours a day making my MLB projections to go from, you know, 9.72 to 9.68 or something, you know, yeah. uh, you know, maybe, maybe he's dramatically off. Maybe ETR is dramatically off, but like you could actually test these things and look and, uh, and see. And so like, for me, I just thought the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. Like I'll just sub to these sites and then, you know, and I, there's also some small adjustments you can make, I think to some of these, these projections, but really, I mean, I think what Leone's kind of getting, getting at here too, is, um, you know, it's not like guaranteed free money or like, no, you, you know, you gotta put <laughs> like, if, if that'd we be a project, great marketing tactic for you guys it, though, guaranteed <laughs> free money. Oh, like like someone in this sim, think that's already, that's not going to be happening. Uh, in like yeah. two weeks from now from various, well, if we put in, uh, later. Patrick Mahomes, if we put in Kansas City at a 50% pass rate, which is just wrong, like every sim with Kansas City stacks is going to spit out his negative ROI. Like the yeah. inputs still matter. It's self-fulfilling to an extent where like, oh, you know, ETR has got Jamar Chase five points higher than the market at low ownership and all the sims with Jamar Chase are positive ROI. Like go figure, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I think the sims are really cool for me in terms of testing the levers you can pull in terms of like, Am I like I'm generally too contrarian? Like I know that's a flaw of mine, and using the Sims it sort of helps me kind of like pull back from being a little bit too contrarian. But like testing, like you know, at what point do I need more correlation, less correlation? If I found some interesting things, like in the small field tournaments, I know like you know even stochastic Sims have found like some of these onslaughts make sense, and we're kind of seeing some similar stuff. So I'm definitely feel like I'm learning a lot. But yeah, you can't just like hack the Sim for the greatest ROI because at the end of the day, the assumptions we're making still matter. And I think ultimately we hope to make this a little bit more customizable, but the way it stands right now, you are sort of stuck with, you know, what we're assuming happens, which is why we provide the the sim mean of all the players that are being used in the, the simulation. That's where I, I hope I want, this, oh. that's where I hope this goes is customizable and let the users do it because they'll fuck it yeah. up. <laughs> yeah that's because we, we've thought of ways to make it customizable and it's like you know we can handle it if they tweak like jamar chase's projection up one or two but if they bring jamar chase up 10 and put burrow at like five like or, or, or they bring up jamar chase 10 t higgins 10 and you know there's there's things that just yeah. wouldn't make sense that no matter what we do we're not going to be able to do it. and it's also hard to make it customizable because as brian kind of outlined with the sims like we're simulating all the plays right so it's not like we're just taking you know, a mean fantasy right. point and, a, you know, slapping some sort of distribution on it. Right. Um, you know, so like, it's hard to just, you up a guy a point and then we resim it. So we've got some ways, I think that'll work long-term right. where we still keep the correlations, but that's it's hard. Not like, yeah. yeah, you you can, you can adjust the, this is what Saberson does. They adjust the distributions post. So like they have play by play. And then if you manually change it, it will just, you know, move that distribution, shift it. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's sort of what we were thinking where it's like, it's not totally pure, but you keep the correlations and it, but it does kind of assume some logical changes by the, uh, yeah, the, the it's probably close enough. Uh, yeah. yeah. A lot of this stuff too, with the criticisms of Sims, like, Hey, you know, garbage in garbage out. It's like, yeah, but we're all guessing like this. Right. Even you guys are guessing, right. Even yeah. ETR is guessing with their staff. Like we're all guessing here. And so like, what's the best you can do? without perfect knowledge is guess, right? And so, okay, now that we all agree, we're guessing what's the best way to come to that, <laughs> to come to that, um, uh, yeah, girls love Sims. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I, I, I also want to, wanna... oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say too, like with the guessing too, like, I mean, there's still going to be like finding lineups that don't, seem like crazy ROI in the sim, but like, you know, there's something that the assumption's wrong. And then again, kind of the Addison example, like maximizing those can be a way to, I do have some concern that over time people will like start playing similar lineups because the sim likes them. And then those are no longer good lineups. And there's that, but like, 
you, you know I'm a Kincaid slappy, Peter. Like, I think our projections light on Kincaid this week. So, like, I might, like, hack together what's the best Kincaid lineup, you know? And then there's going to be other lineups that show as higher ROI. But if I'm right on, like, sort of an uncertain spot where the guessing is more volatile than the guessing with, like, an established player, um, there's ways for me to, one, utilize the sim to come up with the best version of that, but, two, still also beat other people that are using the sim. Yeah, and I just want to kit kind of like a few things too. And everyone's like mileage will vary of how they get their entertainment or how they enjoy playing DFS. You know, Ken's saying it kind of sucks. The Sims take the fun yeah. out of it. I will tell you right now, I had the most fun hand building lineups than I ever have on Sunday because I was going in and tweaking my lineups 2v2s and rerunning the sim on the solver to tell me that and I could even show you guys here on my thing you know I was messing with a bunch of lineups it, it, it got me off of my Sam Howell onslaughts that I was threatening to run there um in my highest one here ended up being the lineup I run, and I was running these 2v2s with Debo and Titans defense versus Ayuk and Raiders defense. I ended up landing on the highest projected sim ROI. I was still getting the plays in I wanted. I was lock-buttoning ETN. I was lock-buttoning Brian Robinson, but I was just testing assumptions on some of these other things I didn't feel as strongly about, which 49ers receiver, which defense, and then kind of letting the math help me make a better decision. And for me, what is really fun about this is it's actually protecting like downside stuff of me just building a truly awful lineup and not checking it against math, which trust me, I've been known to build some awful lineups. And so I had a blast doing this because it also lets you know, like, hey, I'm on the right track here. You're on to something and you can keep messing those assumptions. I see someone else saying like the sim said it uh, was giving me bad plays. Like, again, the sim doesn't give you plays. It is helping you understand the interaction and how those you know, interact with each other in the different ways that those correlations can work out across a large sample. So that was just a couple of things I wanted to say about it being yeah. fun because I had a blast using it personally. Yeah. And I think that that comment is like the prevailing opinion of most people. And that is the way that poker started also. Now, almost everyone, if you go and play poker, even live poker at like 10, 20 plus, everybody's talking about solvers. Um, and, so, you know, and when it first started, like, People were super, super anti. So I could definitely see it going that way, but I'm totally sympathetic to people who just don't want to hear about it. The other thing while we're on the subject of guessing, one thing that's super important, I, I think, for the sim is getting ownership right. And that is why we now have this ownership for small, medium, and large field. But like if we have Deontay Johnson at 15% owned and he comes in at 5%, that is going to make a huge, huge, huge difference in the sim. And so we are, me, Leone, Cody, a bunch of us, we are spending so much time trying to get our ownership right for all three, which has proven to be, I mean, a lot, quite frankly, like it, it's going to be hard for us yeah. um, to do it exactly at the level we want to for small and medium, like we do for large. So yeah, I just want to put that out there. Like while you're on the subject of guessing, not only are we guessing like what Anthony Richardson's pass rate will be in week one, we're also guessing will Deontay Johnson be 15% or 5%, you know, and there's a lot of math and we have a ton of programs that go into all that stuff, but it's still like Brian said, at the end of the day, it's a guess. And if you mess up the ownership, the sim is going to be messed up. Yeah. What I feel good about is like, I feel like our distributions are really good based off the inputs into the player, <laughs> but those inputs are volatile as Adam said. So, you know, based on the players, you know, efficiency, volume, the team play calling and stuff, I feel really good. Like we're now in what the distribution is from what we're telling it. And also, um, relative to teammates and we're capturing those correlations correctly and same thing on the ownership side i feel really good that the field lineups we're making based off our ownership are good now if our fan you know if our mean projection is off in ownership if it's off in fantasy points it's gonna flow through and the sims aren't gonna give you the best data possible if you're wrong about something but i feel like the actual sim part We've worked really hard on and have gotten into a really good spot, but there's always going to be like, we, we, we still can't, someone made a joke. Like you, you mean you guys still can't tell a future, which is pretty much the truth. Like, you know, we, I wish we projected Brandon and I for more than we did, did last week, but um, you know, we didn't. There's also just a lot of interactions going on that you can't keep in your head. You know, no one's big brained enough to keep all these interactions in their head. That's going on in the back of the Sims or like this little small, like, piece of advice I would give is it's a lot harder to sim smaller fields uh, because your guesses are more important. If that makes any yeah. sense. So like, it does. It, it, like, yeah, I'm sure you guys get it. Like, but like for the, the regular person, like if you're trying to do like, like predict the thousand person field or something around there, you know, just think like if you have uh, 
you know, 6% projected Mahomes. But for some reason, there was only one Mahomes instead of, you know, or, or 1%, just a couple Mahomes in there. That drastically will change the IRI, ROI of, of that entire field. And it's entirely possible. Not only is it entirely, but it's going to happen if you – if you do this thousand man field, theoretically, you know, uh, uh, for the next thousand years and, and it's going to look different every time. Sometimes there'll be six Mahomes. Sometimes there'll be 15. Sometimes there'll be two and you got really lucky. Uh, and so in the large field though, there's less of that, right? Cause there's just so many more players and like, you'll have like, okay, 5,000 Mahomes instead of 8,000 Mahomes, you know, lineups that you're competing against. So yeah. if you play the smaller fields, like I wouldn't worry about the Sims that much. Um, you, they can still be really helpful though. And I would still try to do it personally, even cash games, uh, for sure. Uh, you could benefit from Sims from like a game theory perspective, you know, like, uh, w- like maybe like, like, a, a pass catching running back in the flex this week is much better or, or, or worse than the obvious flex play just from, you know, uh, like a distribution comparison standpoint or something like that. And you could, you could kind of like, uh, you know, I, I mean, I was doing, I did a cash game sim for, for Yahoo. And it's just, I don't know. I find it super helpful for, for, for a guy like me who just doesn't want to make his decisions for himself. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, what does this tell me for my, my last, my cash game? And so I don't want to make the two V two choice. Uh, dude, it helped me narrow things. I was just say it helped me narrow things down quicker. Like this Sunday morning, I was hand building more lineups than usual. And sometimes you get to a point where you've got like, I don't know. I could make 10 different stacks this week. That makes sense to me. So it it helped me narrow that down. And uh, what Brian was saying was like, you find some things and I've talked about this. So if people are listening to me, they might be bored of it, but the commander's defense was definitely a big one where, you know, if you just compare the odds of them being in the optimal lineup to their ownership, they're like the worst play on the slate. But if you run the Sims, it's like "Mm, the commander's defense is fine. And, you know, wrapping my head around, that dynamic where in the past there's just no way I would have played a defense that owned. And I played them a lot this past week because of the Sims. Me too. Yeah. I want to, I want to get, this was going to be a question that I had for, for all of you guys and Mr. Mr. Kind of hitting at it here because we talk about like garbage in garbage out for like the inputs on the Sims. But even if you separate like the input volatility, how do you grade the quality of the Sim? Because where we're headed is everyone's just going to slap the name Sim on their product in the same way people did blockchain or NFT or whatever buzzword out there. So like, how do you actually test the quality of the SIM itself, even aside from your ownership projections and your, your um, fantasy projections? The, the best way to do it is ultimately like save a whole bunch of lineups and what your projected ROI was in that field. And then see what the actual ROI for those lineups was in the field. Um, you know, one at a time, not assuming they're playing against each other and do that for every slate for lots of different tournaments and someone's correlation from projected ROI to actual ROI is going to be much higher than someone else's. And I, I want to be careful saying projected ROI. Cause like we're, we're, we have like a message that pops up that like, this is not projected ROI. This is the <laughs> ROI you are getting from the SIM based on our inputs, because we know it's in all likelihood lower because we're going to be wrong about things and uncertain and even brian's point about how sensitive small field lineups are i know we're working on mixing in like more cash game type lineups into the field too to kind of help with the number of lineups that show us plus roi just because we're realizing that like we're simulating like mostly all like we're simulating really good tournament lineups but there's like x percent that are always like iterations of cash game lineups in there that we need to feed in so that's an adjustment we're going to make but yeah if you it'd be really hard to do this but yeah if you just saved X amount of lineups from the sim and what the ROI they're showing and compared it to actual, you did that enough times over time. One site's ROIs are going to be closer to reality than another's. I don't think there is a way. Um, it's that's pretty tough. And also because these things will be evolving. And I know just from my doing my own stuff, if you compare my stuff from two years ago to my stuff right now, it's comparing apples and oranges because it's not the same. I have a lot of different things going on. So that's just really tough. I, I guess if you could download the field that the content provider provides and just look at them, because there could be some dog shit in there, you know, like it's not easy to make a 10,000, 20,000 fake field accurate right. with lineups that make sense. Um, so I guess that um, that's a way I think, honestly, you're just going to have to trust who you like 
uh, who you trust most. And <laughs> I think some of the information you get too is a little bit of a signal. Um, does is it logical what you're getting? You know, as far as like the correlations, like you don't want to. It's hard because there's some correlations that you learn are just different the way it interacts than you think. Which Brian said, like it's hard to wrap your brain around like how these combinations. But there's some stuff that's kind of logical you can test, like it makes sense. And then also like the ROIs you're getting. Um, I know I've seen like elsewhere some these lineups like that we like, and we're like, oh man, this this ROI is way too high at like ninety percent. And I, I check somewhere else and it's twelve hundred percent. You know, so mm -hmm. like there's some kind of like you know just just you, you can kind of think for yourself on, on those types of things yeah. they could even fudge that though you just you just regress it to a mean before you show it to the user so even though your sim shows 1200 you just go oh wait we know that's too high that's so before true. it gets to the yeah. user we'll just shrink that number you know levitan how do you think about it because you guys are i mean you're pretty polarized in that you guys are doing a lot of top of funnel like fantasy content for the people just playing one league and then you got this like deep sim product here like how do you think of that even just from like a marketing angle where clearly the sim audience is just drastically different than the person playing in one home league i think the people that want to use sims will find us and, and <laughs> find it you know like i think you guys are probably overrating the number of people right now who actually want to use sims everybody that brian knows and people playing professionally uh, of course i even think like the 80th percentile dfs player right now probably doesn't even want to use it so and i think the people that want to will find it so yeah we've concentrated a lot on trying to grow social and stuff like that and do more season long stuff more top of the funnel stuff i think the people that want to find the sims will i don't think we need to like even go crazy marketing in it yeah. All right, there you heard it. No sim only fans coming from Levitan, <laughs> where he does shirtless walkthroughs of uh, the solver. Dude, I'm not the one with the porno who's saying your taglines. I mean, he only had he only had <laughs> one of my he only had one of my taglines in the porno. He had like 20 of your of your favorite sayings in the. Did in you watch? Did you end up watching the whole thing? Oh, I I like I, I people are gonna say this is disgusting. I I did not masturbate because I was laughing. I was laughing so hard the entire time. Why did you feel time. the need to even say you didn't masturbate? <laughs> okay, well, I don't know think if you watch a porn, whatever. I, I the was lady laughing. doth protest too much. <laughs> I was laughing so hard the entire time. I mean, it was one of the more enjoyable 45 minutes I've had in a long time. I was laughing so hard. It was really, if this guy, if that guy's watching like incredibly well done, incredibly. Yeah. I mean, if, if something, I mean, I know like me, you weren't going to tweet out a link to a porno, but if you ever want to say like uh, uh, the Levitan tweet of like, how is this, uh, this sim that we're living in right now? That was one of those moments that I still <laughs> don't believe happened. You should cut up every time he says one of your catchphrases. You should cut that up as a video and put it out. Oh yeah, uh, goodness, goodness. Um, live a little, Brian. Brian, are you are, are you still feeling? Because we've had a few. It was two weeks ago we talked with uh, Ricky D and Petty Theft, and like you said, some people were like on you for kind of like the doom and gloom aspect of it it sounds like you still think people are being a little naive about where we're headed with this um but have you are you still feeling the same as you have over the past month or so yeah for the most part i don't think it takes as many people as you think to get that edge uh small enough to where it's just like not you know it's not worth it with the variance um but like, I don't think there will ever be that many people doing it. And then, you know, I've made some of these points on the take cast last week where it's like, it's also really expensive. And now that money's not going into DFS, that sucks, right? Like that can't be good. Um, well, you know, what other things are going on here? Oh, and, and you know, this is the first iteration. This is my main, my main concern. People are like, oh yeah, well their fields aren't that good. It's like, yeah, well they just started. Like, <laughs> most people don't even know this existed six months ago. You know what I mean? Even the people yeah. creating some of them, some of the people creating these sims, like, uh, so like there, there's a lot of tricks and stuff you could do to answer some of these questions and concerns people would have, um, whether they get there or not is debatable and whether it ends, you know, it quote unquote ends the FF. That's another thing too, is people are like, Oh, they're saying DFS is dying and stuff like that. Well, uh, to their credit, Pete, you did call one of our episodes. That's DFS just called Dying. a good title. That's just called a good title. <laughs> and I'm not saying DFS is going to die. DFS will be here for a long time. I'm just saying whether it's 
you know, whether it's, you know, like poker in 2012 or 13 or something, like, do you really want to play poker back then? No, it sucked. You know what I mean? Like uh, I gave it up really fast after black Friday. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, he and, then, says, and, then, and then screenshots him bricking on DraftKings. <laughs> right. Right. And he, get, he gets all the, that was a, that was a pretty big brick though. 120 K or yeah. whatever. Uh, and he also played like a thousand basketball tournaments after saying basketball is not worth it for how long did you see that beat? <laughs> oh, played- I did. He was in like some of the twenty dollars drafters, uh, and not and I thought he, and <laughs> I, I thought he was drafters, and I thought I was he was like, autoing, but he was actually like making picks, and he was like talking to chat and stuff. It was <laughs> talking to the chat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Levitian, I want to ask you a question about this too, because to me, this is kind of my issue with the stuff of like not feeling like there's more innovation because I mean, I feel like we can use our heads. There could be all kinds of new game types, different ways to play, different ways to shake things up. I know DraftKings did roll out the super flex, which I know some people were excited about. So maybe that's a step in the right direction, but do you ever worry about that? Like could the games themselves just become stale because it's the same thing over and over? So uh, I think DraftKings does care. I mean, I get, I I talk to people behind the scenes at DraftKings all the time. They are trying hard on DFS. They launch super flex. They didn't have to do that. They tried hard uh, on best ball, which actually annoyed me. Back to Brian's point about Yahoo. Like before last year, DraftKings didn't have a CSV upload of rankings for their best ball. I mean, it was incredible, you know, and that's kind of like, I, I like playing on sites and I'm sure Brian does too, that don't care about their product uh, at all. If I'm trying to make money uh, for sure. Um, I think people, this whole take a little bit of money, try to turn it into a lot is like never, ever going away. Like, you cannot, I could tell people, look them square in the face. You will lose 50% playing same game parlays. They do not care whatsoever. They are going to keep firing in same game parlays for the rest of their life. I the large field tournaments in DFS where I think the Sims are actually most effective, like Brian said. Um, I don't think those are going anywhere. Like, I think that those are going to be massive, massive, massive uh, forever. So, yeah, I, especially in NFL. If you want to tell me that you know other dfs sports are going to take big hits i would believe that more and nfl i I do not think so they could just lower the rake that would be helpful for everybody (laughs) that's never going to happen i also i've always said like that a company just not caring about making money at one of the things doesn't make sense to me you know like why would they not want to make money at sports books and dfs like clearly companies can handle lots of different things if done well uh FanDuel, though, yeah, they're 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 definitely <laughs> it doesn't seem like they're giving as much effort into it. Um, I think it's it's lost, it's also lost some popularity. Like uh, someone tweeted out that the uh, the first showdown on Thursday, whatever last week, the first one, it's gone down sixty thousand entrants three years in a row. Mm-hmm. So it went from like three million prize pool two point five to two. So and 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 like there's only two hundred and sixty thousand or something like that in there this year. So like another sixty thousand uh, would be quite a bit if it continues that trend. It doesn't mean it will, um, but it does seem like it's it's gotten smaller. Price pools like for something they could do. It would be it would be better for people if they lowered the amount to first to twenty percent or something reasonable. But just what. Adam just said how many that people want the 50 K to first, they want the hundred K to first. So if it would ruin the amount of interest in it, then maybe they shouldn't do it. But I think if people knew what was good for them, less rake and a lower price structure would help DFS, you know, last from this perspective of, you know, of trying to make money out of it. If you just want to have fun, which I'm all for, I mean, I DJ just, just as much as the next person. I don't care if you want to just gamble and make a lineup, who yeah. cares? Try to win money. It's all more power to you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many people that, that are, are not out to play professionally. You tell them that Sims has hurt their expectation by 10%. They, that would not stop them for one second from playing. <laughs> right. Not for one. Right. But then that 10% is everything for everyone else. So, you know, right. so like, that's a good point. Yeah. They will not, you could tell them directly this, this, this lower, the best players ROI down 10%. They're still firing. Yes. <laughs> 
there is like a, an irony to this, Brad, saying the worst tourneys are marketed. It, it's funny too. And I know like it's the reason why Blender likes to focus on like the Millie Maker and the large field because he said there's the field collectively is so much worse. And then we all say to ourselves, no, we need to play the tournaments with good payout structures. Then we all pile into the spy and it's like the toughest fucking field out there. And it's like, are we out leveling ourselves and are actually playing in a harder contest, even though it has a perceived better payout structure? I've got... I got a question for Brian though, with the, the doom and gloom and stuff, I'm assuming with your SIM, you're re-simming with the actual field lineups, like after the tournament. Um, is there anything you're gleaning from that? That's making you doom and gloom. Like, are you seeing like, even with the actual lineups, like, is there stuff that you're catching that you're like, there's less percentage of bad lineups or, or anything like that? It's uh, hard to uh, – because they have – you know, the other sites have these post-lock simulators as part of their product now. So I do uh, – although I've been lazy the last few days – go back and look through them. And for MLB, which we got a little longer track record here now, uh, I, I, I post about this on Twitter. Like there was only – you know, of the 150 maxers, there was like – I don't remember, 30, 150 maxers or something. Like only like three of them won that day. Right. And then the next day, only nine of them won. I'm saying had a plus R plus ROI in their post lock the sims. Not set. actually what happened, right? Because because what we want is what the, the sims tell us, because that's what we're gonna be basing our play off of. And so the debate happened. Well, it's garbage in, garbage out. So if you use their stupid projections, they're not as good as our projections, and you would win if you used our projections because our sim shows that, you know, Leone's number one and these, and in their sims, they show Levitan's number one. So it depends on who's you use. That is true. It definitely matters whose projections you're using. No, you know, full stop. If you're really good at making projections, you're going to make money in DFS. But the percentage of dudes who play 150 who are plus ROI should be pretty high in theory, right? Like, otherwise, why would they be doing this? Um, uh -huh. And so that number... I thought was pretty low in general. This is even before the full sim wars, uh, you know, the full sim wars break breakout. So I don't know. I didn't think it looked great. Um, gotcha. I was trying to think through like what it would look like post lock for it to be because like, so there's, let's say there, you know, there's 10% rake in the wildcat last week, right? Like, no matter what we do to sim, like there's that available amount of money, like whether the sims are bad, good, or whatever there's so like at what point am i seeing our sim where i'm like this is this is bad like is it the number of bad line really bad lineups reducing because like let's say everybody spot spat out at like 0.9 roi right like everyone's paying the rake their lineups are equally like that obviously be super bad um but yeah i think we had like a third of the field as like plus ev but a lot of that is like slightly plus ev which is going to be super sensitive to inputs and i I thought I was kind of encouraged by the number of bad lineups in the Wildcats still, yeah. but maybe, yeah. um, maybe that's the, not the case. What, one thing that we saw for sure was like a lot of people played cash or cash-ish lineups in the Wildcat, and those graded out as like the Stone Cold worst in the Sims, even though we thought they were really good lineups for cash, really good meeting lines. So like, it, yeah, that was like something for sure. And for me, like to what Leone said, Sometimes I think I just go off the reservation in tournaments. I'm like, I need to be as contrarian as possible. Where when you run into the Sims, like you do not, you, you do not need to be nearly as wild as I think some yeah. people think you need to be to to win tournaments. Totally, totally agree. I, I mean, I said a million times, like you should always, you shouldn't always be over the chalk, or you shouldn't always be under the chalk. Like yeah. some weeks you should be under, and some weeks you should be over. So like if you if you do these Sims, you know this type of stuff for long enough, you see that when you know when you're always under or something like your thing's probably broken. I, so like, what do you guys think about this for a signal? I think Leone is asking like, when's the signal? Well, you know, how would you know? I think the signal will be showdown and um, MMA because there's so few combinations worth it that what we're trying to do, you know, you know, in my opinion, at least is get like low uh, duped lineups uh, and try to get lucky and hopefully no one dupes them at all, but still have a realistic chance to win. Not just one, not just no dupe lineups. Those are easy to make. You just make a shit lineup and no one's going to play it. So you want to make good lineups with low, right? And so like 
there's not that many lineups. So is now now that Leone's, I you know before let's say I would have one to three, but now Leone's on that now too, and Levitan's got one in there too, and then my next lineup, Pete's got in there now when he wouldn't have before, and so once those combos get to that equilibrium, we're fucked. So and it's yeah. really easy to think about this in showdown in MMA. It's a lot harder in classic. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, if that happens, I'm not saying DFS is dying. Uh, but it, you know, once that kind of like where people where Ricky D's going, I'm never playing showdown again, you know, uh, then you might want, like there's no that. lineup you can play. That's like, yeah, the, because that, you know, like that realistically could happen where there's just, there's enough variance in classic that you could convince yourself otherwise, but in showdown, if your Sims are any good, yeah, eventually you'd be like, yeah. But in that, are that part of it, that lines. element is what makes NFL DFS such a great game, right? In the same way, poker, that anyone can show up. I don't care what GTO, Scandinavian wizard you are. I can still show up with a shit hand and suck out on you on the river. Like, that's why these games continue to exist. And so that's what's interesting about the equilibrium and where do those edges actually dry up. But the ecosystem will always have that. That's like, that's a feature, not a bug of, of DFS. Yeah. It's possible that continues with just like, you know, there's enough donks, but, but is there going to be enough donks for enough people to eat, you know, or like to, to the variance, like NFL yeah. is the worst variance. Like you could easily lose, be a plus CV player and lose like your entire NFL career. Like it's entirely yeah. possible. I'm talking if you're playing real, you know, the, the real tournaments, not a hundred mans or something like that or cash games. Yeah. But if you're playing, if you're playing large field, cause they're three times bigger at least than every other sport. And it's mm -hmm. tough to win the other sports. So like if you're like average and you're playing a 50,000 man tournament, you should win that basically once every 50,000 years, you know? So like, and you only get so many weeks here, um, you know, you can play the afternoon slate and the, and the morning slate and stuff and, you know, showdowns and get some more volume in there. But like, you, you know, you super swingy sport and if, and it's NFL too, you know, it's not NBA. You're not like guaranteed to get, you know, 50 LeBron touches or something like that. Yeah. Uh, the one thing for NFL is at least it's like fun to play, right? Like so, some of the other sports, yeah. I mean, golf's really fun to play too. And um, I mean, but like NFL, everybody wants to play, casuals want to play. I feel like that's that's a good sign for it. But like you said, like how many people are, you know, playing MMA showdown? And then if you get enough people using Sims for that, I don't know. I'm just thinking through the popularity of the game probably helps NFL a bit as far as the, the audience it caters to. Levitant, how did you think about, because we talked about this too uh, on the show of like pricing this stuff, right? Because you already said like the sickos who are into Sims, like they're going to find this and people like Brian or people near Brian's level, like they're going to be completely fine paying basically whatever price because at the scale and volume they're playing, it's it's justifiable. What about for like the hand builders, the people who are just playing like the spy and stuff, but they think like this is a really cool tool. I'd love to have this as part of my process, but like the math doesn't add up to spend this much if you're only playing that much. How did you guys think about pricing a tool like this? I, I'm skeptical. We have two versions of the sim on the site. One is multi-entry. You can run a 150 lineups through. If you want, one is for single entry, the stuff I was talking about before. I'm kind of skeptical how many people total want the 150. I haven't even looked at the numbers or what's been sold or whatever. I'm skeptical how many people want that. I think a ton of people that like play DFS like me or you know, around my level will want to just have the single entry sim. And I believe Leonie, that's $20 a month. If I'm not, yeah, $19.99 a month. That's $19.99 a month. So like they're trying to make it affordable for, right. you know, people who are playing like, you know, the $12 single entry or whatever, like people can just mess around with it, with that single lineup without feeling like totally put out. Right. And so like, we wanted to have something for people who $20 a month, they just want to mess around with the sim, put be able to put one lineup through. If you're a power user, the, the, um, 150 lineup, I believe is 150 a month, uh, Leone. Yeah, that's correct. And that you can sim 150 lineups at a time right. and it's like more integrated with the optimizer. I don't know how many people are going to want that, but I, I think that as this stuff gets more popular, a ton of people are going to want the 20, the, the $20 a month one. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, it, it, it is still fight, right? Like, I, I have, like, humility with my DFS play. Like, I want the math, like, checking my work and making sure I'm not doing something dumb. But for some people, it's like, no, I want to put my nuts on the table. Of I course. know ball. This is my life. I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, that, like, for some people, that is the fun of DFS, which is, it's just, like, an interesting thing that this these dichotomies still exist. A hundred percent. And it's so, and, and honestly, like, I, I have to go, and there's times in, like, I want to play something other than what I play in cash because i just like i have a feeling or whatever or, or yeah. you know i just want to be a man and pick a lineup for once but i know that i have to go defend it you know and when we have something that's like three or four points off of what we have that doesn't make a lot of sense right so like i totally am that's exactly what i'm trying to say i'm totally sympathetic to people who just want to be a man and take their nuts out and pick their team like that's deep down that is me honestly like deep down that that is a hundred percent i i, I would deep down on the surface right <laughs> on the surface that is me however however these I, nuts I'm also, are out right now <laughs> I, I, however i'm also trying to win like i just i, I want to win so badly so like i think there's like somewhere in the middle there where i'm trying to like figure it out and i think that i'm in the same boat as as a lot of people Leota, you've you've had to because is it that a, a hallmark haven't you guys had some knock them uh down drag them out battles over projections where your mask telling you one thing and the ikb bros are telling you to boost it or lower it we've definitely Honestly. had some battles you know they, they've gone both ways we've we've played head to head where i just run the like our ceiling mean blended against whatever adam hems and haws about for three hours and, right. and we let it yeah. let it ride listen what what i do is not healthy i i I'm, I'm not exaggerating i spent 24 hours massively stressed about the 2v2 this past weekend it, it's not good for anyone right it's just it's just i, I was at the kids soccer game i was thinking man anthony richardson and justin jefferson or, or, or jalen hurts and calvin ridley i was like i was like melting down and it, that is not a healthy way to live you know it's not but like adam is legitimately like good at it like they're I mean, I, I, I'm not a, do you know, ball guy quite clearly, but there, there's also some elements that sometimes are just hard to catch in the projections. Like we do the best we can. Like we, we really struggled with Anthony Richardson last week where we, I mean, it turned out that he was a good play and that lineup Adam is talking about was like, we basically had two optimal lineups and one was Hertz, one was uh, Anthony Richardson. But it was like, how do we quantify this risk that he's just like terrible? Like, it's hard to get that in a, in a mean projection that like, he's just awful at football. You know, we saw the six for 17 preseason game. He came out and he was, he was very good. But like, there are things like that that are tough to like, you know, totally get. And even on feel like too, like maybe we're a little bit like Tyree, like that's in hindsight. But um, generally the, uh, the nerds and the, and Adam's nuts meet in the middle <laughs> can, you, can you do can you do this with your guys sims like what i would do to solve that is i'd make uh, a fake 10 man cash game field i put you know five four hertz three of the other one and two other believable ones and then mix and match and keep doing that and then see what so you just hire Matic to give you five yeah. of his shell lineups yeah like yeah uh, man it's like, also there it's your <laughs> um no, that's a good point. We could do that. Right now we have it just set up for tournament stuff. And sometimes we have some stuff hacked together for ourselves internally, but we haven't really uh delved into it versus cash games. There's so I mean, I could talk forever about the things we want to do with the Sims long term, but like yeah. even some of like the input volatility guys to like sim them with like a different set of inputs, like X percent of the time. Like if we're unsure like which running back's the lead, for example, rather than treating you know, 50% rush share, Zeke 30% rush share, Tony Pollard from last year, whatever, rather than getting the natural variation historically off guys with those carry shares, we actually like sim like a different starting input and then do the sim from right. that. So like there's, there's so many layers you can go into and we haven't gotten that deep yet, but like long-term hopefully we can. Yeah. So you don't have, you don't have backup QB showdown in there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the siege that, simulator is in, in serious siege? beta. Well, what, okay. what Leone what Leone just described is exactly what Rufus just like was been trying to do over the last six months or so with golf with the weather is like try to figure out, yeah, there's a 50% chance of rain at one o'clock, but we need Sims for like all the different outcomes at one o'clock, not just that. So like, yeah, I know that that's like the next step. I know Rufus has been working on that for golf. Um, we got John in the chat. Leone, why the change in ceiling projection? Uh, Calc, we let people know what he's referencing as well. Yeah. So last year I had like, uh, 
linear quantile regression model to do like now we're cooking on the show everyone's just, just to get real, the viewers to are get rolling real it. nerdy with it there were definitely some <laughs> limitations with it and it was we did 80th percentile outcome with ceiling um i guess what you need to know is it was just you know if you were to play the game 100 times this is like their 80th best outcome was what our ceiling was last year this year now that we have a full set of simulations our ceiling number is the average of their top 25 percentile outcomes. And um, I could have one of our data guys, I think it's called like tail value added risk or, or I don't know exactly what the, the term is for it. Um, but we just think it's like a more actionable number. One we thought 80% was kind of low. The example I used on the, uh, the ETM with Dink was like, Sometimes we'd have these tight ends pop too much in the 80th percentile, right? Because they catch a touchdown, right? Which is good. But then they don't really have the volume ceiling to have like these huge outcomes in like the 95th plus percentile. So this just captures all their high end outcomes. I think it's a, a little bit more actionable than what we had previously. Uh, another follow up on that. Uh, for you, Levitan, with you guys now doing small field ownership projections, which I'm very excited about. And I think one of the things that was really good about your projections last year, just relative to more of the, you know, computer generated ones is that there was a bit of your like soft science, like bro knowledge on like, Hey, everyone's talking about this guy. How much of that is getting filtered in to the small field stuff? Because that's where we really see the steam, the condensing. And I was reviewing a little bit of it last week and it did seem like obviously the best plays were higher owned in the small field, but I'm curious what other like special sauce is going into that other than Leone's numbers. The, the, I think the biggest thing is understanding in, in small field that the guys who like just missed the cut for cash, like, yeah, they could be in cash, but not really like maybe Joe Mixon last week, like you could have made a case for him in cash, but no one really played him in cash. Those guys are owned in large field because they project reasonably well in small field like no one clicks those guys you know what i mean and so like you get way lower on like the fourth or fifth best uh running back because they're not really part of the cash build and nobody's like excited about them either we make like 40 50 manual adjustments off of the algo on ownership projections every week and cody always tweets it out or lets us know like our manual project our manual adjustments on ownership are almost always create uh, better R squared in the results, you know? So we're in there making manual adjustments. I think it's feel understanding the type of players that people want to click. And I, I don't know, I can just like, I I can sometimes just tell like when people are not going to play a guy feel or, it. or when they are, you can just feel it, man. And honestly, that this is like, I think the best way in almost any business is to do things is to have like some people who are really good at feel-based stuff and some people who are really good at this hardcore math stuff and try to blend it together as well as possible. If you get too many Leonis together in one room, like nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna make sense. So, and if you get too many of like me and Silva type bros in the room, it's gonna be really bad too. So yeah. <laughs> we we always also like, um, in addition to like those guys get squeezed, the, I feel like the day we were like, we need small field ownership was this time that Rashad Penny got like super steamed. Yeah. Yes. And, and everyone wanted to play him and he got like steamed in like large field to and by steamed in large field it was like he like 10 to 12 percent but then he was like like one of the highest owned running backs on the entire slate in small yeah. field and it was something that like it was hard to catch in an algo because he wasn't in the optimal lineup but there was also no other running back at his price that like fit the cash game lineup that some people wanted to fit and he was in this amazing game environment where people kind of prioritize that beyond just what the base projection said. So um, there's definitely situations where like you need it. To, and, and as Adam said, if you were to just look at the subset of players where we made a manual adjustment and run the R squared for, for our straight algo versus our manual edits, it's like very clearly the manual edits were good. And there's guys that people like fucking Jacoby Myers every single week, like nobody wants to play him and he projects decently. Like you get a feel for some of these guys that are just like these volume based guys that people don't really want to play. Shout out to uh, Jacoby Myers when he scored this weekend and then immediately gets a taunting flag. This fucking guy hasn't scored a touchdown <laughs> in like four years. <laughs> every time I play him, then he finally gets a touchdown. He's yeah. shoving his dick in front of the quarterback's <laughs> face. What was the stat? He had the same amount of touchdowns in his New England career as he did through like one half uh, with the Raiders. Yeah. Uh, and then he got hurt yeah. too. Yeah. I'm like, well, um, the, the fucking balls on this guy. Can, can I say something really quick about yeah, Levitt? Yeah. I, want, I wanted to mention, uh, he said like the third or fourth running back 
uh, oftentimes isn't owned in, in small field that I would never know this, but without simulations. So this is another way you could use it. If you can get a guy in, and this is in any sport, uh, who's like decent, like a third or fourth running back, for example, and you're the only person who has them in that tournament, that's a pretty big edge. So now granted, that's not easy because you're going to be wrong and he'll be on high or something, but just, you know, uh, something to like kind of hand build, uh, yourself. If you could pull that off where you're in a 500 man tournament and you know, who's, who's, who's third, but a Madison or something. And you, you, you're the only one who gets him. Um, that's actually pretty sweet. Um, that doesn't mean you're going to win, but that that's something like Sims yeah. will tell you. And that's super intuitive, that's right? Really- like, like over, like over Zed, I know you were on ETN last week. I thought he was an awesome play. He was never really in play for cash was ETN, right? But I thought he was an awesome turn play. He ended up being kind of owned, but I bet that one looked good in the Sims too. Yeah. It's also like a range I actually of don't know thing. because I had him lock buttoned in every single one <laughs> that I ran, but I think so. <laughs> There's a range of outcome thing though on the ownership too, where like, if you do this long enough, you can kind of get on a rip four or five guys and it's like, one of these guys is going to go totally overlooked. There might be some guessing game as to who it is. And you might not be right every week, but if you take your shots, just like you take your shot on a guy who might hit a huge ceiling, you take your shot on the guy that like worst case is 12%, but like there is some outcome that he's like 3% and yeah, it's really, good. yeah. You're, you're trying to get lucky here, right? When you're playing GPPs. So like, yeah. you're not just trying to get lucky and have the nuts, you know, like trying to get lucky. Like, Oh shit, this guy's not even owned in the tournament I'm playing. Fuck. Yeah. This is lucky. You know, stuff like that is to, to like to if you're hand building, definitely be something well, I think about. And even last year, right, where we had that string of just chalk hitting best plays hitting. And I do think there is an element too of not only are the tools getting better, but even back to like the soft science stuff. I think people know ball a little bit better. Like a lot of times when you're looking at those four running backs, one of them gets steamed. Like it generally is like the best play. Like everyone's instincts with these stuff yeah. are getting better, even when projections are similar. It's a hun- even like season long fantasy football yeah. bros. I mean, I remember maybe like five or six years ago, I tweeted something about like routes run or targets per routes run. And I got like a bunch of replies of people tagging their friends being like, look at these guys. They, they're they doing this stuff that it's completely insane. They're tracking their routes run, how many targets they get on them. <laughs> and now I think even in like casual, not casual, but in somewhat serious season long bro leagues, People are like on top of that stuff big time now. So yeah, it's there's no doubt. Not is only the data and science stuff getting tougher, but people's knowing ball knowledge is a hundred times better. Yeah, you'll see yep. guys stacking in home leagues now and shit like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, how about this? How about to end on? Let's let's go to the math and let's go to Levitan's got uh, Leone. Give us the read. How is this Eagles backfield shaking out tonight? Everyone wants to know. They want to know. Is Silva talked to Jimmy Kemsky? You know all the stuff. Here. What are we <laughs> at? And then I'll get I'll get Levitan's gut feel here. I already okay. sent I already sent Leone the inside information. So this is this is skewed. Oh, oh he's corrupted. He's corrupted. All I've right. seen that, I've seen the inside that is, that is corrupted. <laughs> okay, it, what, I'm, 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 I will say I'm worried that Boston Scott is going to play a lot more than anybody out there wants him to. That's my concern. Yeah, uh, my take is that the Eagles, uh, people think of the Eagles as a run heavy team, but they're actually not. They were 13th in pass rate of expectation last year. And when you have DeAndre Swift as your starter, which I think he will be like to me, you, your obvious game plan against Minnesota is come out and throw and throw and throw more. So, uh, yeah, I think my showdown lineups tonight, which I'll probably only have two or three, uh, will be skewed towards Jalen Hurd's volume and uh, um yeah, I, I'm. I think Swift will be the feature back, but I do not feel good enough about it. To, and I'm not even sure he's he's even if he is the feature back. Like at 4K, he's the best play. So yeah, from like an input standpoint or input standpoint, this has to be like one of the trickiest backfields like tonight that you would ever have to project. Like it's just wild. Yeah, and and the uh, the salary cap is is tight tonight on Showdown on DraftKings. Like you're gonna need to find like some cheap. Plays. So I think a lot of people, Rashad Penny's only 1600. We're talking too much ball here. I don't want to talk about this. We're talking yeah, too much yeah. ball. Let's talk about pornos. No, we do got to get, <laughs> uh, get going. You guys can check out the, uh, the solver. I'll drop, uh, the link down below. I think your guys is free trial. That was just for week one, but people can hit up that $20 a month if they want to check it out. Correct. 
Um, so there you go. You can mess with that. I've been, I'm going to be screen sharing it on my crams uh, on Sunday morning. Uh, it's definitely very helpful for the hand builders out there. Brian, any other thoughts on uh, the state of the Sims after talking to our ETR bros here? Uh, I mean, are you going to ask them like, you know, what team they're on? Oh, you're right. That is how we end all these shows. Are you guys on Team Ship It Nation or Team Run Pure Sports? You got You got to pick a side. Everyone <laughs> picks a side out here. We have. We have a, a. I'll say we have a company policy on all drama. We're leaving it to Lowell's. We are taking the high road on all uh, DFS drama. We leave it to you guys. But man, I gotta say, you guys, I haven't missed the Lowell's in the last like three months. The episodes have been absolutely fire. So keep up the good work. I mean, think about the niche. This is a dfs show but not a dfs show about playing dfs a dfs show about dfs drama Th think about that niche that you guys have found i love the small niches it's so no levitan the meta as a dfs site founder is you say no drama and then immediately drama just follows right after that so i think what we heard there is you're ready to spill the tea yeah uh leone do you uh are you under the uh the thumb of this company policy or do you want to side with there, RPS? there was an input error into my model i'm getting back <laughs> some na values so <laughs> it, uh, yeah. i i can't think for myself so this is this is a tough spot uh brian uh final words here we get out of here um these two are clearly cowards uh yeah <laughs> no i don't think i got anything uh mma ownership projections up on my site for saturday i think there's a i think there's mma this weekend right if anyone wants Tell it anybody i don't know Why? you get the ownership so you, you get the ownership and you don't know if there's a card uh, i haven't done it yet i'll do it saturday oh okay okay brian brian always says this stuff i i i'm confused like like is selling or your ownership projections for MMA like just like a hobby thing? Or are you doing this for money? Like I, I, I'm confused on the motivation for releasing the MMA ownership projections. No, that's yeah, free. Um, because uh, the, I guess the motive, mo the motivation is just followers in general. Like, you know, clout. yeah. I mean, we told tons of clout uh, ladies, tons of <laughs> women. Um, like we were telling uh, whistles go woo when he came on, like, it's tough to get people to sign up for your site, even if your whistles go woo. You know what I mean? And he wasn't getting a ton of people. They're like, just give away your ownership. You know, that's what I do. And and I get, I've got like two thousand people signed up there, or whatever, and people follow me. So, mm -hmm. but it's great. Brian, what Brian told me behind closed doors is that his goal in life is that there's a sim porno that references brick75.com. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Like, next oh, week. show me those field lineups. <laughs> show me those field lineups. <laughs> <laughs>